Good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to my carving nest. My name is Tim Perry, and I would like to welcome you on behalf of the International Association of Wood Carvers. I'm glad you could join us today with Blake and Dave as we share our carving journey together. I'd like to welcome you to my little messy shop here. And I hope today that you learn something and I'm sure I'll learn something. This is all new to me. So once again, I'd like to thank you and welcome you to coming. And I'm sure maybe some of you know me and I may know some of you guys. And if I don't, it's a great way to meet you today. So we'll get together and we'll sharpen knives and get a stick and see what happens today. And I hope you learn something. And once again, I'd like to welcome you and thank you for joining today. Perfect, man. That was Fantastic. Good. Yeah, good job. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, we'll, we'll put that at the beginning of the YouTube video. And we'll, we'll, I'll edit that. I'll edit it. Right All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Sure Welcome again to the International okay. Association of Wood Carvers. It's awesome. uh, Saturday afternoon, uh, so, the 18th so of March, too, uh, a little weird. bit after 3 p.m. Yeah, Eastern sure. Standard Time. Sure. Yeah. And uh, we want to thank everybody <laughs> for joining man. us uh, nice, across Tim. the world on this uh, <laughs> International Association of Wood Carvers <laughs> presentation. Uh, today in our meeting, we've got Tim Perry coming to us from Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, Tim's a caricature carver. He's going to be doing a demonstration. Uh, we provided his pattern out on uh, Facebook earlier today, and uh, if you want to carve along, he's happy to uh, have you do that. Uh, otherwise, you can go back and watch the video once we post it out on YouTube and follow along with the pattern, uh, but I want to let you all know that is available out there. Uh, before we get started with Tim, I just want to let you know a few things that we've got going on. Uh, next week, we've got Raymond Kinman that's going to be coming in with us. Uh, Van Kelly is going to be coming on on April the 8th. So we've got a few carvers lined up for meetings coming up. I've got fillers out for several carvers uh, to try to go ahead and fill that schedule uh, for April and on into May. Uh, so I should have a new schedule coming out in the near future. I uh, want to remind you all about Wood Carving Academy. Uh, if you want to take classes uh, online and you have some free time uh, where you can do that at your own pace, go out and check out woodcarvingacademy.com. Uh, all of the uh, past recordings are out there available for you to go out and take uh, classes at your own, uh, your own pace, your own leisure. Uh, you also find the uh, upcoming workshops uh, that they host that are out there. I want to tell you a little bit about those. Uh, Dave Stetson's got one that's starting on April the 22nd. Uh, if you're interested in taking his class, you need to reach out to him and get signed up. Uh, his class is going to be Wood Carving the Waving Walker uh, to Caricature. And uh, Dave usually has a uh, rough out and a pattern for that. So, uh, again, if you're interested in that, reach out to Dave Stetson. Uh, he's usually on our meetings here, and he'll be happy to get you signed up. On April the 24th, Janet Cordell is uh, going to be uh, teaching a class on an old faithful horse. Uh, Janet does some realistic type carvings, and uh, I've seen pictures of the horse. Again, it's out there on woodcarvingacademy.com. It's an amazing carving. Uh, if you're interested in that, contact Janet, get signed up. Uh, she'd be happy to have you in the class. And then on May the 20th, Dale Green, who's usually on our meetings as well, uh, will be doing a class on caricature dogs. Uh, that's just a two-day class, so it's a good weekend class. You can come in, uh, get uh, plenty of instruction in two days. And the good thing about these online classes is you can see everything that the instructor's doing. Uh, so if you haven't taken advantage of those, uh, try to do that if you can. Again, Dale's class, you need to reach out to Dale, contact him directly and get signed up for his class. Uh, he'll let you know as far as patterns and stuff that you'll need and uh, provide you all the materials to do that class. Uh, I want to remind you about some other online stuff that's available. Dwayne Gosnell does a little Wednesday. Uh, you can go to his, uh, his page and check out uh, the offerings that he has. Uh, Chris Hammock is doing the online bar flies. So if you're interested in that, reach out to Chris Hammock. Uh, Alec Lacasse, who's been on with us a few times, uh, has the fundamentals of wood carving. You can go out on his page, uh, get signed up for that. And again, he has 70 or so videos out there uh, that you can learn to do uh, realistic faces. He does a lot of cottonwood bark stuff. Uh, and it's, it's a great school. So make sure you check out Alec's stuff. Um, having said all that, so again, we're happy to have Tim Perry on. Uh, Tim uh, is in the same club that uh, Dave Levy that helps me uh, with these meetings is in. Uh, I want to take this time to thank Dave. I don't say that enough, but I want to thank him for all of his hard work behind the scenes. 
he does all the scene switching and uh, the recording. Uh, he does the video editing. Uh, he adds some commentary, fills in for me when I'm not here. Uh, so, Dave, I just want to say thanks for all that you do. And, uh, uh, you know, without, without Dave, I wouldn't be able to continue to have these meetings. So thanks a lot, Dave, for all you do. Um, having said all that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Tim Perry. Again, Tim's going to talk to us about his carving journey and uh, do a demonstration on how he does caricatures. Tim, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. All right. We're good to go. Thank you. First off, I'd like to welcome everyone to my shop. It's great to have you guys here, and I hope today that you'll learn something and that you will benefit from our getting together today. I am Tim Perry, and I don't really want to rehab everything that Blake said about me. There's not much to know, really. I'm an old guy that loves to carve. I like the, fellow, like the fellowship of other carvers. So without further ado, I will go ahead and grab your knife and your piece of wood if you want, and we'll go ahead and get carving. Before we do that, though, I would like to say how long I've been carving. I've been carving for about oh, well over 30 years. I started in the early 80s, started bird carving, actually. And I carved birds for about 10 years, and it's I still carve one occasionally. But bird carving is a very meticulous kind of carving that takes a lot of time and you do a lot of building and this type of thing. And I ran into, I was introduced to character carving in the early 90s, I guess. And I will give credit to Tom Wolf. It's through his books that I was introduced to character carving. I tried a couple and I just fell in love with it. The expressions you can get the variety of carvings and well i've been doing carving caricatures now for over 30 years and i'm you know it's new every day so thank you for having me in today and we'll go ahead and begin our demonstration and so we, they've switched now i use for this demonstration and for a lot of things i use a six inch piece of wood, six inch long, one and a half by one and a half. Here you can see the piece I've got here. You can take it and just start carving right away on it. But in the, you can also save you a whole lot of time and a whole lot of carving if you saw out your pattern. Blake told me that he'd put a pattern out there. So if you've done it, should have this at this point right now. And I'll go ahead and move this one out of the way. Here's some measurements. I got a lot of people I've noticed really like to have a measurements. You can see the front face is an inch and three quarters. The back's about an inch and a quarter. And then here we have the all important center line. That will be our base for everything we do is around this line, this side and front. Here the back up to the elbow is three and a half inches. You can see that. And then when you saw it out, you had this. You can change it somewhat. And I was going to do this at the end, but I'm going to do it at the beginning, I think, before we start carving. You can take this basic pattern here and you can carve numerous things, hats. I'll show you a couple right here as we go along. Here's one I did yesterday. He ended up being Andy Griffith, but he's got hair. And here's an old guy. He has, he kind of looks like me a little bit. Kind of no hair, different expressions. Here's hats. You can do hats. And it's all that same basic. And you can even, we'll go way out on a limb here. And you can do cartoon looking characters. This was inspired by the Adams family. There's a couple. There's his sister with her cat. So these were all carved from this basic pattern. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and get into the carving aspect of it. And I'll describe what I'm doing as I go along. And hopefully you can follow me. I'll unsheath my blade here, and we will begin. Like I said earlier, the center line, all important center line. 
we'll keep that throughout the carving. And you can look at the top of it. We have it, there's a center in the top and the center in the sides. Runs down the sides on both sides. So this establishes our main things. Center line on the side or ears go behind that. Behind this line here that, that shows us where you know, our ears are at. And what we're doing at this point, we're just going to get some basic foundations. And what I'm going to do now is take, get this design, get this off, get these corners off. That way, we'll get a corner to work on. And you can do it pretty quick, take big cuts. And I've noticed a lot of times, a lot of people have trouble making big cuts. The trick is knowing when to make a big cut, when you can take a lot of wood off, and when you can take a little bit of wood off. And now we're just working down to that line our ear line and our center line for the face and giving us a more or less a corner to work on there. Do it again on the other side. I was sitting within just a couple of minutes there, we've got a good foundation for where our face is going to be. Now, what I'll do is go knock the back corners off about a quarter of an inch, maybe. Maybe maybe a little more than that, maybe a three-eighths. And the reason I do that, I don't like corners much. So... If you look at the top, we've already got a round area for the face here, for the head. And the thing I'm going to tell you now is a little bit different than what you may have learned in your carving adventure. I used to, I'd get to this point or maybe carve on the corner or something and I would immediately start working on a face. And I come to realize at some point in my carving career, that the first thing you need to work on is the head because the face is going on the head. And I found if you just carve a face, a lot of times your face will be too big or too small and it won't fit your carving. So if you work on get the basic foundation for the head first, that'll save you some trying to figure out how to alter your carving so the face didn't look too big or what you can cut off to shrink it down a little bit to fit into the thing you're going to carve. And we've got his head at the top of it, basic shape. We'll go down about halfway. And then halfway, it's an inch and a half. That's uh, roughly seven eighths. If I'm wrong, bear with me. And I like to go up just a little bit. That's where the eyes will be. There's my eye line. And then the nose, you can make it a big long nose, a little short nose. We'll go a little above halfway for the nose there. Ears, same thing. Just bring this line on around, and I like to move it up a little bit. That gives me a little more. If I want big ears, roll him over and do the same thing. There's that line for his eyes up above it, the top of his ears. Now we've got all we need to carve a face on there to guide us into the carving of the face. The first thing to do, remember I said about carving the head first, that's what I'm gonna do here. We're gonna make a round head to start off with. And it's, we, you can do it quicker than you would imagine. Yeah, there's his ear. You can see the ear there that we've got. I'm going to go and I'd like to say that, and you all know this, I'm sure, the main thing is a really good sharp knife. 
I don't know if it's possible to get a knife too sharp, but the sharper it is, the more fun it is to carve and the easier it is to work with. I'm I'm bad, and I do this, it's probably knife makers probably cringe when they say this. A lot of times, I'll take the blade out of the knife they give me and I'll put a new handle. This is a good example here. This is, I believe this blade is uh, from a knife maker by the name of Wells. Wells knives that I got quite some time ago. And although his handle was good, it just wasn't was, I Like I say, I like to make a handle. And this one, of course, has got my magic ghost bead on it. That makes it carved so much better. Keeps noses from breaking off. You'd be amazed what the magic bead will do there. Okay, we've got his ears established here. You can see if I'm going too fast, you want me to back up. Just don't hesitate to tell me anything you want to. Now we're going around. I'm going to leave this front on, and I'll tell you why as we go. This little point. We're going to round off the head. See, there's our center lines, and then you got, I don't know if you can see that, but that may be too light. They cross right there. That's kind of our goal that we want. How many times have you carved a piece and you ended up with a square head? If you haven't, I've done it often, especially early. I had trouble, like I said earlier, with my faces fitting onto the and I found that this way you've got a face that works. See if you look at it, you can always see the how it's round, starting to round up on the top, round in the bottom. We've got a head going here. Now I leave this here. This could be a hat, this could be hair, this extra wood here. If you want it. So we'll leave for the time being, we'll leave that here. We'll go to the sides. And I'm cutting into the shoulders here. That's a little piece of wood there. So you can take a pretty good cut into there. Do the corners work in. Do the same on the other side. That's another thing about carving. Always try to keep your carving symmetrical. And the way to do that is, of course, with guidelines and things, but the main way is switch it up. Carve this side and switch it over and carve the other side. And keep looking at it. Because I know from experience how many times you really focused on carving this eye here and you carve the whole eye, you don't start over here. And then you go over here and you start carving this one and you got to look and you got one up here and one down here or ears or anything that way. It always, so it'll be symmetrical. Look at it often, flip it around. Be aware of the grain. You'll notice a lot of carving. I've noticed on watching videos and things, you'll see carvers flipping their carvings around. One of the reasons is to get a better angle for their cut. But the main reason is, is the grain in the wood. Always cut. And you'll know immediately if you go against it. What I'm doing now, I'm just cutting. See the depth of this right here, how deep this area is? On the front edge of that, I'm going down to that. And try not to go any deeper than what this area is here. Remember what I said about carving the head? See so you now how it's, the, sh the face is shaping up here, giving us a, an area for the face. That's where our face will be. And I learned this the hard way. I don't know how many times I've tried to carve a face on a piece of wood. And then when I go to put my ears or want to do something else on, my mouth ran all the way around to where my, wanted my ears to be, or my eyes were too close to the ears. This way you're working down to the, you're getting the shape, the shape of the head. You're looking good. 
right now he's got he's a tough guy he's got a huge chin on him there we'll get rid of that here in a minute right now i'm just bringing the ears out a little more narrowing the face and we like a face that is i'll just make a couple of lines here kind of oval now if he was uh, a ball headed guy like this old guy here we would just make it round all the way around but we're going to leave that little bit for now in case we change our mind taking the corners off down here around his chin see big cuts and a lot of people want to do it really fast and this is a pretty quick way to do it. See this area here we've got now? We'll look where his nose is here. Go around, scoot down just a little bit. That's going to be the bottom of his ears. Run this all up together. Isn't that a wonderful sound? That's slicing it. That's a Good sharp knife goes in the wood. Look at that side. Oh, man, he's already got a face. I like this guy already. I don't know who he is, but I like him. I can almost hear him. Well, take a little bit off there. I mean, you know, that's not me. You need to do this. And once again, you see, I'm going back and forth. What I'm doing is I'm keep trying to keep him symmetrical. Look at his ears. See, this, this side's a little bit longer than this side. So we'll move it up. And if you'll notice, we don't have a face, a face, if you will, on him at all yet. Smooth all this in together here. That all flows. Now, so a lot of people, and I say a lot of people, I use that term. Actually, I've done it. That's why I know it. Is they'll get to working on the face and they'll forget the rest. Now I'm going to just jump down here right quick, give myself a break from this area here, and take some corners off. I don't know about you, but as I hold a piece of wood and work on it, I don't like sharp corners. They just don't feel good in my hands. I like to round everything off. And that's what I do the whole time I carve is round things. Even flat plane carvers, you'll notice. Their, their corners are not very strong. They're just nice, smooth cuts. We'll kind of work on the body a little bit. We're going to the shoulders. I like narrow shoulders. Narrow. I'll tell you a story about narrow here. From my childhood. When I was young, the area I grew up in East Tennessee, there was a place in the hollers that was called the Nars. And I never thought much about it. It was just, you know, one of those areas in, in your hometown where that's what everybody called it. It was kind of a shortcut between two little towns. You went through a mountain, through a real, very narrow little holler, and you could take a shortcut to town that way. Well, it's called the Nars. It was the name of this area. And it was actually at one point houses, although you'd never believe it's skinny and as dark and deep as this holler was. So as I got older and wiser and I grew up, I got to wondering about why that was called that. So I said, I'm going to look this up. I got researching around and find out that the Nars was an old word. Now, I believe it was from maybe German or something. I'm not sure exactly now. It's been so long ago since I did this. But anyway, I looked it up and found out, and it meant to growl or a growling noise. And I said, wow. So I, at this time, I was in the service. I'd moved away from home. So in my infinite wisdom as I had grown up, I went home, and I was going to show off to all the people that I knew what the NARS meant. So I explained it to my dad. 
And he kind of looked at me a minute and a big grin come across his face. And he said, Kim, what nares means, what the nares means, means it's narrow. It has nothing to do with growling or anything else. That's just the way we say it. So I was totally embarrassed once again. And I learned that the nares is just a skinny place in the mountains. Okay, you see what we got going here? His shoulders are coming up. We got his head rounding a little bit. Now this area back here, oops, let me watch, be careful. This area back here, you can put for hair or you can round it on down in and blend it in with this area. So you have all kinds of options at this point. And we'll move on down a little bit. Round. Again, I'm rounding areas off. So it, mainly it feels good in my hands and I'm sitting some points that if I get distracted or something, I'll realize what it is. What I'm doing now, here's another key point. You notice he got his hands in his pockets. Oh, and then again, I used to do this. I would carve and carve the body and the hands were flat against the body that I carved. So I've since learned, we'll take down about, about where we think his hand should be and start going in into the wood here. And then we'll go up. And this is a grain thing I'm doing here is the reason I'm going up and down. I always carving downhill, as they say. Round it off a little bit. And the same on the other. Now we may not, we probably will. I know we won't get finished with the whole thing today. But I hope I can get some ideas and to guide you as you carve these figures or any figures really. Is you want to establish a base, a foundation for all your other carving. Now, if you look at this, we see this goes in a little bit here. We can even go a little more if we want to. Because the legs are going to be skinny. Chicken legs, little skinny legs. And what we've done. We left a place to, for hands, the bulging out of the pockets. That adds so much to carving. And then I'll do one more thing on establishing a base. See the arms here, the marks we made for the arms. And you can see on the original thing here how we drew the arm in here. It's easy to lose that arm. So what I do, I make straight in and up here pretty pretty deep and i'll just make a big chip cut right there now we've established where his elbow is how big his arm is and we won't lose that we get distracted or we get the car we do the same on the other side the elbows are the same because you cut them out. You can see where the elbows are. Sometimes, I, most of the time, I'll draw a line here. You can see on this side, that. there's a line. Yes. Now, you know, I talked about foundations. You know, I'm just kind of rounding everything. Really now. now, when I get into here, his body is going to be about three quarters of an inch wide, maybe. Not much more than that. So we got all this you know, come down. You can make his legs splay out or any way you want to do it. See, you see this narrow body. Got his arms. We'll bring those up here there's his pockets let me do a pocket just a little bit here we'll just see there's a pocket around the arm all now 
what we've done thus far, we've established all the basic things we need for our cargo. And from this point, you can go in any direction, many directions. And here's another thing I like to do. As long as I'm doing what I like, let's get rid of these old sharp corners here. Oh, yeah, that feels good. Man, I seem like I know this guy here. Now we're going to jump into his face. First thing we want to do is a nose. Everything is kind of based around the nose. And you'll notice if you want to carve, put a big beard on him, you can. Then you won't have to do this part here. You can run his beard down as far as you want. I'm going in here, the line we established for a nose. I like that chin going, that could be a cartoon guy or something. But we're going to lop it off right now. We don't want that kind of chin on it. So you can see the possibilities as you carve. You don't have to stick to any kind of design. That's why these little figures to me is like a sketchbook. You can just go in any direction. You're free. You don't have to carve in the lines, if you will, with a few basic lines, some basic foundations. You can just go in any direction. Okay, we've got his nose here. Round it off a little bit. Make it all kind of blend in together. Oh, yeah, I like this guy. His nose is a little bit wonky there. So I'm going to get my line back. My center line, that all-important center line. Yeah, I can see I kind of went to one side a little bit. Let's even that back up a little bit. Oh, yeah, that's good. So we got his nose, and now we're going to, his eyes, remember the little bit above center line there? Look, it's cut straight in there. And I go down to start with. Straight in and down. And there we go. He's got a nose. Big old block, wonky looking nose, but he's got a nose. He's got ears. So now we're going to work around the nose as we work on the face here. See, we've got his general shape. We've got a nice, round, pleasing shape here. We can take this off or leave it on, depending on what kind of hairdo we want to give him. Yeah, I like the way that's going. This line here, the Three and a half inch up, there's his crotch. And I will, I, I carved these 99% with a, a knife. But there is one thing I do a ga use a gouge for, and my gouges are back here. But I know I'll carve straight down like this, and it saves. Let me just get my, yeah, hang on one second. I'm back. And this is a number five gouge, a seven to work, somewhere with a small sweep on the blade. And just go at it from the sides. I'm not going to do a lot. I'm just kind of, but this and I don't, I wish I remember, made him in Stetson. I know I really like his work and followed him for a while. There are so many, I hate to give credit to one person, goodness. So many wonderful carvers that have taught me so many things. And I, my hat's off to all you guys. You know who you are. Anybody that's showed anybody how to do anything. But see how easy that is? That just makes it super easy. It's really fast. Just take your about five or seven. This is about a half inch. I mean, you can use any size, I guess. But that's kind of handy there. See, so his legs in there. See, just we've been going now for oh, maybe thirty minutes at the most. Maybe a little less than that. I'm not sure. 
but we've got a whole lot there. We've got a guy here. He is a guy. We can make him, give him a big belly, make him fat. We can make him super skinny. We can put his elbows again. Remember, about a half inch, about three quarters of an inch. There's the back, cut into the eggs. He said, huh, he was working on the face. Now he's around on the back. Well, that's just the way it is. I, I jump around all over the place. And you know what? It comes out in the end. Now we're going to move back to the face. And speaking of that, I'd like to share something I know found out with you. That any carbon that I've ever done, there is a point in it where I think it's a piece of garbage. I don't care what it is. I, carvings from 13 or 14 inches down to a little two inch guy like this guy here. There comes a time when you, you say it's a piece of crap. It's not going at all like I wanted it to. It's the face is wrong. The legs are too short. I mean, it's thousands. You know, you know what I'm talking about. There's just it's just not working. It is nothing like what you got in your head. But what I found is if you just keep on working through that, don't listen to that voice in your head that's telling you, man, I screwed this up big time. Just keep carving. And it will work itself out and it'll just go away and you'll look and you have a big smile and say, wow, that turned out pretty good. Now we're going to do a cut, get his nose. So we've done the face. Let me back up just a little bit. The nose, bottom of the nose. We've had our lines established. One cut. Top, down this way. So there's basically four cuts. Then we're going to do the side. Now you can use gouges for this, but this works great. Down to the size of the nose. Smooth that around a little bit. It on the other side. Thinking about carving, I've got to know where the point of your knife is. When you carve into areas like this, you don't want to be digging too deep. Just deep enough to remove that big chip cutting. Look at that. I like that. And that's a comical nose. I don't know if I've ever seen anybody with a nose like that. But... And then now I'll come. And it depends on what type of nose. We'll do about halfway today. Carve back to that line. Oh, we've then got the nose all straightened out there. Now the eyes. We're entering the dark areas here. The area of fear. Carving an eye. I know how hard that can be, how intimidating that can be. See, that's just a cut down that way. We'll do it again on this side. Kind of down, over close to the nose. And it's always harder on one side than the other. I've heard many carvers say, and I always carve the left eye first. That's great if you can do it, but I've got this mental block. I can't get make myself do that for some reason. Oh, look at this. He looks kind of sad a little bit. We've got his angle down. We've got his nose. Oh, he's looking great. We got to cheer him up though. I don't like that sad guy. Now we're going to go back to his nose. each corner up a little bit. Oh yeah, that's great. Now, we're gonna make a smile line here. Smile lines that right. Straight down. And this, this cut, and then the end here, and then a chip cut straight up through there. That really makes the nose just pop out. Let's 
seeing what I've done, I've kind of cleaned it up as I went. We've got good place in there for eyes. We can get a hat, hair. We can remove it. Uh, could you bring that closer to the camera so we can get a better look at it? Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. See how these this area here just cut in. You use a gouge for this, but I had a knife in my hand, and it's just it's simple to do. But we got a face going there. And at this point, I've seen some people, you could just paint an eye in there if you wanted to. But we're not going to do that. We're going to, we are going to jump in the deep water. We're going to carve an eye in this. Again, let's get our center line. And this is something I like to do. I'm going to put a dot on either side. Kind of make sure they line up. And you can make a line straight out, but I just like to put a couple of dots. And I know you're, the eyes are supposed to be three eyeballs crossed with the eyeball in the middle. I don't subscribe to that too much because this is a character after all. And I may need to adjust. Now, I was just going to cut. Let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go up and around. Pretty close to that line if you can tell it, see that line that goes up through there where I made that cut. Pretty close to that. Straight in and across and down. Then go under it and take it out. There we go, that simple cut there. And I don't care who you are, my friend, we got an eyeball going there and a mighty nice one. So here's another, here is the key thing that'll help you a whole lot when you carve an eye. Now, a lot of times we'll do this and we'll say, well, I'll carve the bottom. Then we'll go right at the dot and we'll cut across here. No, because if you do that, if you carve, you'll know it gets smaller and smaller and smaller the more you detail you put into it. And you'll reach a point where you're just trying to pick out this little teeny areas for that. What we're going to do with this line, instead of going across here, we're going to come down. I come down halfway to the nose. And do the same thing. Down. Now I'll stop and flip it around. And the reason is, see, I go about halfway, is the grain. And this is especially critical when you're carving something like an eye or small areas. I noticed I was watching Bruce last week. And he was flipping his carving ring. And now, like I said earlier, it's about the grain. You want to carve with the grain. And at the bottom of the eye, we're going to round this out, take this a little bit off of the bottom here. Oh, that's great. Man, that looks great. We got a nice round eye, and you can go back in here, and if you'll notice, anybody that teaches in cars, they'll, after they do the basic cuts and they get the foundation, You'll see them go back and they'll start doing little, I call it little piddly things. They'll fuss with it. And what they're doing, just smoothing it out. Get my brush here instead of making a nice round. We got a good eye mound there. We can do oh, anything we want to with it. Now we're going to do it the other side. Same thing. We got our, this is kind of a guideline that, that we put in, and you can use a gouge. But I used a knife. This is kind of a guideline, this area here. We go up and around and get it the same width as that. So once again, my dot, I'll go straight in. 
and I'll tilt my knife down like this. You want to go down to it. And then we'll go in. And just like that, the other guy going. Now we'll here and smooth this down a little bit. Again with the grain, halfway, then do the other side. See what a nice smooth cut we got going there? We've got this nice area here for an eyeball. Once again, have about halfway down the nose. I mean, give him a big old eyeball. And you'd be amazed how much it shrinks as you work on it. Now this one from the top, we angled our blade down this way. Well, from the bottom, we're going to angle our blade up this way. And it's about the light. If you look at this with the light on it here, you know what? I'm going to turn on another light over here. I don't know if that's too much glare or not. Is that still okay, guys? Is that? Yeah, okay. I think you're good. Okay. We've got a shadow here. The top, the undercut is a shadow of the light shine on. Well, the, the bottom part is just important. It reflects off. You'll see this area here looks really light when the light hit me. Clean it up a little bit more. It's got some boogers in there. So that's why we, the bottom is up. It reflects light. That shows the bottom edge. The undercut the top, you've got a shadow. And we'll do the same over here. See how the, the angle of the blade was up? Halfway around. And I'll turn him around and come down. Always aware of the green. You've got to always, and you can tell pretty quick when you go the wrong way. I know you've noticed when you have to fight it, or you'll see a crack start coming in and when it lifts up. Now I'm almost, and I clean on my pencil mark. Is that car? Because if you don't, then your carving's going to get gray, and graphite has a way of getting all over everything. Now, when I'm smoothing the area down below the eyes out a little bit, I want to round the. I want to go up here, and it was. See what I'm doing? Raising the eyebrow, if you will. So we can look, look here. We got one eye raised up, one down. We can give you that kind of weird expression. Like, hmm. And you can bring this side of the nose up if you wanted to. This is a squinty eye. And this eye's open. Well, like I say, the expressions are limitless. So let's, but we're going to do both eyes very similar. So, see, I'm raising the eyebrow up, finding the eye, the area around the eye. And what do you see here? One eye is higher than the other, right? We don't, we're not worried about that at all. That happens more times than not. That won't hurt a thing. That, in fact, that probably adding character. I've looked at a lot of people in my seven years on this planet, and I hadn't seen too many perfect ones. So this guy here is just one of the crowd. Now we'll make his eyes, we'll make him smiling. Just a big old smile. Yeah, I like that. And you can move his mouth is up, down, different things. You can make him mad. Maybe, maybe he's not happy. Now I'm drawing this in here. See my thought process. Maybe he don't like having one eye higher than there. So gonna make me mad. See, I moved the mouth up closer to the thing. 
you can make him kind of snooty, move the mouth down lower. But any, you can put it anywhere. We're going to make him kind of like the mad eyeball thing guy. Anyway, we'll do the just a happy guy today. Oh my goodness, time is flying by. See, this is one of the things I love about carving. I mean, the time just such a relaxing, and I almost said hobby, but it's a not hobby. It's an art form. I mean, I know carvers that have put so many years into their work, so much time, so much expression. And that's what art is. Art is who you are. You know, showing a piece of yourself to the world. Your emotions. You can tell what kind of mood I'm in a lot of times by what I carve. And it's the same with musicians. You hear piano players or guitar players, they play sad songs when they're song, sad and happy songs when they're sad, happy. So anyway, well, here's a here's a carving. I was going through a bad time. I was mad, kind of sad. He kind of what inspired that was uh, the sound of silence, a Simon Garfunkel song. That was kind of what inspired that. But, Anyway, back to our guy here. He's probably a little aggravated. See, I'm just cleaning up a little bit now. Now, another important part of the eye, the eyelids. I'm going to make them down pretty good. Just so it's for visibility. You can see better. And at this point, I could actually even his eyes up a little bit by making his eyelids on a level with each other. Let me demonstrate that a little bit. Down, I always go down because this, is, this area here is going to be fragile. Not very deep at all. Remember about the shadows? Look at that. He just, that eye just pops out there. Now, on the other side, what I said about trying to even them up a little bit, we'll raise this eye a little bit more. Maybe that might be too much. But I don't know. That's just about right. It could be a little bit deeper, I think. It took a little longer on the eyes than I normally do because I was explaining. But you can see they're not hard at all. They're not. It's not very difficult. You can clean them up. Put and put some happy lines, happy smiling wrinkles, crow's feet. In there, and in the very corners, you take a minuscule little chip out of there. And we'll do the same on the outside. Very small. If you get too big of a cut on the corners, you look like a pea sitting in there a little, rather than an eye. Go back and smooth it up a little bit. Oh man, that's a that's a great eye. That just turned out good. Before I go, I'd like to jump on to something else too. You can see how we're done. I'll put a on this bottom lip. Very small. You can use gouges for this, save a little time, maybe. See, I give you one, you can see his bottom lip there already. We're going to jump around here for ear right quick. Before we close, I'd like to just touch on this. Can you show us that eye a little closer? Okay, sure, yeah. We have it nice, and you can round it, you know, just smooth it up good in there. Hey, Tim, kick it back a little bit towards the camera so that you can sit a little better. 
There you go. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Yeah. So you can see in just a few cuts how you can establish high. The main, I guess the main point is make it big. Establish your line that you want to put your eye on and then go halfway down the nose for the bottom part. If you notice how it moved up, you know, we said our original line was probably about where it is now here, but we went way down here, halfway down his nose when we started. And then everything compressed up into this eye shape right in here. You have a nice round mound area in there. So that worked great. It's kind of rough, but he can be refined. Now we'll do the ears. I'm a little trick I want to show. I don't know. See, I'm rounding the ears, taking the corners off the back when you take a little bit bigger corner off. There we go. See, there's a good ear shape. And you can take a about a number seven, maybe, or something. Yeah, I'll just do this. But again, you can use a knife. And if you put hair on him, you want this to go down behind the hair. There's a, a nice looking ear, just a couple of cuts. Now, here's the trick I want to show you. That I'm proud of this because it took me about 20 years to figure it out after digging in ears and doing all kinds of things. If you carve an elm with stab cuts, you can make the ear. Straight in. Straight in. Straight in. Straight in. See, there's... I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, there you go. There's the elm or the W. Depends on whether you're from the north or the south. And take that out. So just in those cuts, we have established the earlobe, the part that goes around the top, and whatever that little pointy thing is called there. I forget the, I think the medical term for that is little pointy thing. And then we'll just go around. Not too deep. Again, remember the direction of the grain. And then connect this line. Look at that. That's the finest ears you'll ever see. And of course, you just round off, back to round them up, all the sharp edges and corners off, cleaning it up. You can get it real fancy and make a cut right here and then give it a little more variety there. You can make them stick way out. See, we got his face. And we still got room for hair if we want. We can put him aside, burn. In this area appears in the temple area. Go around, we can narrow the face down more or less, or leave it like it is. Oh man, that's looking, like he's a good guy. See, we've got his arms. We can go back and work on that. His hair. If we don't want hair, we can just round this on like this guy here. This is my COVID guy. Read my lips. He got his mask on. <laughs> that was a fun carving. And he just, he has no hair. He is slick headed. Almost like me. So that's I think I am about out of town. So I'll close right now with this. I just, I hope you guys enjoyed it and you learned something. I know I enjoyed it. It's good spending time with you guys. And I hope we made some new friends out there. And again, I'd like to thank Blake and Dave and the International Association of Wood Carvers 
for their time and dedication and work to progressing and moving forward this wonderful art form that we all enjoy and love so much. Again, I'd like to thank you and I'll turn it back over to Blake now. Thank well, you, Blake. Thank you and nice job. All right, Tim, thanks so much. Uh, I did want to share, we found out in the, uh, in the pre-meetings that we have that uh, Tim's actually from Bristol, Tennessee, which is the area that I live in. So uh, he, he's practically a neighbor, although he lives up in Louisville, Kentucky now. He, uh, he's from right here where I'm from. So uh, he and I may be even relatives. We may be cousins <laughs> or something. So anyway, thanks, Tim, for coming on. Uh, well, you're quite welcome. I want to remind you all of some things coming up. Uh, the CCA is going to have their annual meeting, the Carving the Rockies. Uh, that show out there is September 23rd, 24th, uh, 2023 in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Uh, so make sure you're making reservations to get out there again, September 23rd and 24th. Uh, we will plan on being on site there and uh, we'll be broadcasting live from that show. Uh, but we'd love to see you in person. So try to come out there. I know the uh, Renegade Woodcarvers Roundup starting uh, on the 20th of March down in Nashville. So hopefully some of you are participating in that. Uh, the Rocky Mountain Carvers Roundups on April the 28th. Uh, maybe some people are getting out there. The uh, Charlotte Wood Carvers Showcase is coming up on April the 14th. Uh, so if you're in the Charlotte area, make sure you try to get down there. Uh, again, remind you of some workshops. Uh, Dave Stetson uh, has a workshop um, on the 22nd of April. Uh, we're carving the, uh, wall, uh, the Waving Walker. Uh, so contact Dave if you're interested in that. Uh, again, Janet Cordell, April 24th, carving the Old Faithful Horse, and Del Green on May the 20th, uh, carving Caricature Dog. So plenty of things for you all to get involved in. Make sure that you're sharing carving with other people. Uh, try to get out and carve something this week, and we'll see you all next Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time uh, with Raymond Kinman. Thank you all.